we are here in this in this talk um, sharing some first insights from the special issue that we've been working on together. And this special issue is edited by uh, Sophie Josef, Lars Hallgren, Lotten Westbay, and myself. Um, and so we are the editorial team. We've been now sitting together thinking uh, about what do the articles in this special issue tell us about environmental communication and some of these insights we're sharing today. So first I wanted to say though why why did it occur to us to do a special issue? So in MISTRA environmental communication we're all interested in communication on the environment. Okay. But we're coming from very different perspectives. We come from very different di different disciplinary backgrounds. We look at different aspects of environmental and sustainability issues. How can we share these diverse ideas and perspectives with a broad audience? Um, we believe there are people that identify with the field of environment communication. There are people who are engaged in the wider environmental social sciences. And although they may be doing research on communication phenomena, they wouldn't use the term environmental communication. And then there are people engaged in wider interdisciplinary work. They're interested in communication maybe as well, but they might not use the terminology. But we think that all three of these groups, they, they should be interested really in the work that we're doing. So um, we thought, well, how do we bring together the diversity of our work as well as recognizing the diversity of potentially interested readers? Um, and then um, we came up with, we chose to edit a special issue, um, which is a compilation of journal articles that can all take quite different perspectives, but still offer puzzle pieces to better understanding of environmental communication. And we chose the Journal of Environmental Planning and Management here because we're hoping that this journal will make these articles actually, but put them in a place where they can be found by readers by, from all these three different groups that I mentioned. Um, okay, if I talk so much about diversity, what brings the special issue together then? There's, there's of course a number of ideas that, that we all can relate to. Um, so there's first of all, the idea that communication can be understood as the joint construction of meaning. With, with in the special issue we're trying, or in our research more generally, we are trying to highlight the complexities of communication and also its relation to change. Then there's the idea that communication is multilateral and multimodal. There are many different participants in communication, as in this bungee cord metaphor. Um, there are many different forms of communication, and that is, this is important, this matters. And then there's the idea that communication over sustainability is a struggle over what is sustainable. So imagine here in this metaphor, different people with different ideas on sustainability pulling in different directions. Um, there's disagreement, there's tensions, as you can imagine. And the, these disagreement and tensions, as well as the, the, the power that is at play, at play, they need to be considered in our research. And then one other idea that, that we all seem to be interested in is that both structure and agency are important to consider when we look at communication. Our ambition with the special issue is to showcase what happens if we then put the spotlight on communication, directing attentions to both processes and outcomes of meaning making. And we want to speak to more than environment communication audiences bringing together research conducted within MISTRA environmental communication, but also beyond. And so far, there's five articles published in this special issue. Eight further manuscripts are under review. We are also working on an editorial that pulls together shared ideas, but again, also highlights diversity. And we're hoping that the, all the articles will be out by autumn um, this year. So now to the to 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 the most interesting part of the talk. What have we learned so far from these different contributions? So each of the papers tell, of course, their own story. But uh, we want to spend now a bit of time looking across uh, and looking at them together as collections. And one first point that I would like to mention is that we found that of these papers, most of them follow in a way a similar storyboard. So they start by focusing on the instrumental purpose of a communication practice. So a communication practice that wants to achieve something in a specific way. And then they examine this practice, they unpack what happens, they ex and examine the wider constitutive and often unintended effects of this practice 
offering a deeper understanding of, of what these communication interventions really are doing. That's, of course, interesting in itself, but it also has clear implications for communication practice. Again, if you look at this octopus bungee strap metaphor, if you imagine if somebody pulling too forcefully in one direction, meaning having a very clear instrumental purpose, well, what happens then? You can imagine there are unexpected effects of this forceful draw in one direction. But the observation that most, maybe all of our 13 papers in the special issue look at communication that has an instrumental purpose that is connected to sustainability issues in some way, that does of course also raise the question, where is our research on environment communication without an explicitly sustainably related purpose? For example, we could also imagine papers on everyday talk that happens that happens to shape people's views on sustainability, but wasn't aimed at doing this. Sophia. Yes, thank you. Um, do you hear me well? Good, because uh, then we have a second theme that we want to talk about that we saw, and this is uh, the environment in environmental communication. All papers in the special issues study communication in relation to the environment or environmental issues, and they usually focus on people. Uh, but some articles expand this focus and look a bit closer at the environment uh, in environmental communication. Uh, and one example is the hot of the press paper by uh, Thema Mielstein, which tries to see what role the environment can play in, uh, in environmental communication. And in the article, they analyze how our interaction with the environment through gardening, that's their case, how it impacts how we make meaning about the environment. So that's one, one theme that we will dig a bit deeper in, um, in the special issue. Then another theme uh, that we saw uh, is open versus closed environmental communication. And open here, uh, we use to refer to when the content is not fixed, but is supposed to develop through the process of communication. And for example, the um, the paper by Lotten, Westbury and company, um, this paper tells us what happens when openness uh, is the foundation for dialogue processes in large carnivore management in northern Sweden. Um, and then we also have another example of this openness, and that is uh, in the co-creation lab paper, which presents a format to work with very open environmental communication, focusing on learning. Uh, then on the other side, closed, uh, this then refers to communication with fixed content. For example, Olvik, today's Olvik and company, uh, they investigate in their paper what happens in professional discussions about the circular economy. Uh, and what they found in those discussions was very strong norms about how to behave, how to talk, namely that you need to be hopeful and positive and critical discussions aren't really welcomed at all. And then a last one, which is storytelling to save the planet. Uh, and this presents three different ways of storytelling that each are uh, differently open or closed. Um, and the whole special issue presents uh, quite a broad range of this closed versus open environment communication. And needless to say, perhaps here, but this matters a lot for how we talk and how we learn and how we change. Um, yes, uh, I really encourage you to read those papers for yourself as well. And um, we're not finished yet at all because like Anke said, five published, eight more to come and an ed editorial. So um, please stay tuned, uh, watch the space uh, online. There will be a lot happening, a lot coming out. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact any of us, Anke, uh, Lars or Lotten, or me. Thank you.